I want to share something with you this morning that's going to just really, it's going to help you. I'm going to teach you something this morning. It's going to help you. It's going to bless you. The title of this is, Go Get Me My Donkey. <laughs> Say that with me. Go get me my donkey. Now, in... Uh, uh, let's see. We're going to start in Matthew chapter 21. In Matthew 21, something happened here, and we're going to uh, kind of see a pattern here of what we need to follow in Matthew 21, uh, verse 1. Now, when they drew near Jerusalem and came to Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, you shall say, the Lord has need of them, and immediately he will send them. Now, what did Jesus do? He clearly communicated to his disciples exactly what he wanted them to do. Now, that's what you do when you're a good manager. You've got employees. You communicate clearly to your staff what, the, what you want them to do. Jesus told them where to go. Jesus told them what they would find. And Jesus told them, okay, you'll find the donkey, untie him. This is important. Remember this. Uh, there'll be a test later. Final exams will be posted. No. Um, I'm sorry. I'm in, the, I'm in the Bible college gear. Okay. Jesus gave them specific instructions. Jesus didn't go get the donkey himself. He sent someone to go get the donkey to bring it to him. They had to go, they had to untie it, and they brought it to Jesus. Now this donkey was going to carry Jesus into the fulfillment of what God wanted to do. Now, there's something that's gonna carry you into fulfillment, but you need to send your staff to go get it ready, unlock it, bring it to you so that you can ride on in in victory and fulfill everything God has for you, all right? So we're supposed to cl clearly communicate to our staff what we want and we need to expect them to do a great job at fulfilling our request. Let me introduce you to your uh, supernatural staff. Number one, your faith works for you. Your faith works for you. In Luke chapter 17, let me get over there. Luke chapter 17, everyone say, this is good. <laughs> See, this is all vo voice activated, so you have to do it. Luke chapter 17, and starting in verse five, the apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. So what's the topic here? Faith. So the Lord said, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be pulled up by the roots and be planted in the sea, and it your faith would obey you. Your faith works for you. Say, my faith works for me. My faith works for me. And then he says in verse seven, which of you having a servant, faith, plowing or tending sheep will say to him when he is coming from the field, come at once and sit down to eat? No, he will rather say to him, prepare something for my supper and gird yourself and serve me till I have eaten and drunk and afterwards you will eat and drink. See, faith works for you. Your faith does what you tell it to do. Okay, it's your faith is out there plowing. It's preparing the way for your harvest. Your faith is out there uh, uh, keeping the sheep. It's watching out over your stuff. Your faith is working for you. All right, let me introduce you to your next member of your supernatural staff. God's word works for you. Say, God's word works for me. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12 in the Amplified, let me read it. Just, you got it here? Pull it up. Hebrews 4, 12 in the Amplified. For the word that God speaks is alive and full of power, making it active, operative, energizing, and effective. It's sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating to the dividing line of the breath of life, soul, and the immortal spirit, and of joints and marrow of the deepest parts of our nature, exposing and sifting and analyzing and judging the very thoughts and purposes of the heart. Here's the kind of staff you want. You want them active, operative, energizing, and effective. You don't want a lazy staff member. You don't, you're, come, on, come on, man, look alive. You know, you want your staff to jump too, you know? You say, you know, let's go, let's do this. Let's, let, you want them effective, all right? And the Word of God is effective. It's alive. It works for you. Say, the Word works for me. 
Here's your next member of your supernatural staff, angel armies. Angel armies, not just angels, but angel armies. I want angel armies. How about you? I don't just want angels. I want angel armies working for me. Amen. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14 says this. Hallelujah. Are they, the angels, not all ministering spirits sent forth? Remember what Jesus did with his disciples? He sent them forth to go get the donkey. He said, go get my donkey. Are not angels, ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who will inherit salvation? The angels, <laughs> when you speak the word of God, they, they hop too, man. They're, they're alive and full of power. And they're out there getting your inheritance. Yes. Say, angels work for me. Angels work for me. Now, here's the last one, and here's where we're going. Your tithe works for you. Yes. Your tithe works for you. Many people don't put their tithe to work. They tithe, but they never tell their tithe what to do. They give, but they don't give it instructions. Okay, tithe, here's what I want you to do. So I'm going to read out of Malachi chapter 3 and verse 10. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes and he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And all nations will call you blessed for you will be a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. This is what your tithe is supposed to do for you. But your tithe will not do this for you unless you tell your tithe to do this for you. You need to give your tithe specific instructions. Say, what happens if we don't? Verse 13 and 14. Your words have been harsh against me, says the Lord. Yet you say, what have we spoken against you? You have said it's useless to serve God. What profit is it that we have kept his ordinance and that we have walked as mourners before the Lord of hosts? Don't go around saying, oh, this stuff doesn't work for me. I tried it and it doesn't work for me. You have not commissioned your tithe to go do some specific things for you. So what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to say, my tithe is always working to open up heavenly opportunities for me. You're supposed to say, my tithe is always working to create maximum overflow in my life. You're supposed to say, my tithe is always working to eliminate every obstacle, rebuke the devourer. You're supposed to say, my tithe is always working to launch the worldwide I am blessed campaign. The whole world, all nations will call you blessed. Well, that's a worldwide I am blessed campaign. And your tithe is going to launch that if you tell it to. If you don't tell it to, if you don't tell your tithe to do that, it doesn't know what to do. It's going to sit in the back and play solitaire. And that's not a good employee. Ouch. Okay. You're supposed to say my tithe is always working to implement... Uh, my be fruitful and multiply program. You have a be fruitful and multiply program. He will make you a delightsome land. He will make you a delight to the nations of the earth. So here's the point. Your tithe will do everything that you tell it to do. So say this with me. Heavenly Father, I send out my tithe. And I say, tithe, go bring me my donkey. Go bring me my donkey. Bring me my new ride that's going to take me into the fulfillment of everything you have for me. I believe it. I receive it. It's active now. It's effective now. My tithe is working for me in Jesus' name. Now give the Lord a big shout of praise. Hallelujah. Spencer and Cindy Nordyke, Reaching Nations and Generations. For more information, visit nordikeministries.com.